increment uh, it will have this uh, same distribution as you look at x of t2 minus t1 and minus x of 0 right so it only depends on the difference okay so let me write that let uh, uh, let x of t such that t belongs to some t uh, is a stochastic i'll write sp for short for stochastic process i'll use sp for short okay defined um, over a set of epochs tau okay um, <clears throat> So this uh, this tau could be either um, a non-negative reals or it could even be an integer which is non-negative. Okay, well, uh, it's integers. Okay, is that fine? Then um, this particular thing, so x of t says that t belonging to t. This is a stochastic process has stationary increment. Stationary increments. If. Okay, so let me draw some pictures. So I'm just verbatim copy of whatever that's there in the textbook, but this is the geometry, right? So for example, if you take T1 and T2, okay, and I'm looking at X of T2 minus X of T1, that has the same distribution as so this is nothing but t2 minus t1 so if you look at another process which starts at zero and this is t2 minus t1 so the difference between for example x of t2 minus t1 and x of zero will have the same distribution as x of t2 minus x of t1 okay uh, then we say that it has independent uh, or stationary increment property right so stationary increments if for any t1 less than t2 x of t2 minus x of t1 this has the same distribution distribution as x of t2 minus t1 mi minus x of 0 okay um whatever i i wrote some stories but uh, can you give me an example based on whatever you have studied so far hmm? example of a stationary or a sta uh, stationary increments hmm? you guys can hear me uh, yes, sir. Ah. yes sir so we have drawn in a boson also sir it what is that what is stationary increments there n of t like said there we have hmm? yes sir, counting process counting process right what is n yes, of t sir. the number of arrivals in an interval of 0 to t right so yes. in fact um, to be very precise let's uh, look at n of uh, t1 comma t2 so that is the number of arrivals in the interval t1 to t2 right so um, that's the counting right so that has independent increment property do you agree for example, um, in fact, uh, you know, whenever you talk about stationary um, Poisson pro process, po Poisson process, um, this independent increment holds good, right? It doesn't matter whether you are looking at uh, an interval of one hour today or tomorrow or in the evening. It doesn't matter, right? As long as it's one hour, that is the difference. The number of arrivals will have the same distribution. The distribution will be the same, not the number of arrivals itself. Okay. So for, in other words, if you take an interval of half an hour, the number of arrivals is Poisson distributed with rate lambda times 30, whatever, 30 minutes, right? Uh, it doesn't matter which 30 minute interval you are looking at. So that is called the independent, independent sorry, that, that is called stationary increments, right? Because the distributions are the same. So the next thing sir, that we will, hello? yes, yes. So this one is similar to that uh, sir, time invariant system we took, like linear time invariant systems. Isn't it? Um, uh, linear time invariant has got well. That's a uh, we discussed when we discussed about the systems. Um, basically, deterministic. 
uh, one way of describing that system is through uh, impulse response and we said well the um, if the impulse response doesn't change over time we said that it's uh, time invariant right this is more of a stochastic right so it's random arrivals and we are looking at the distribution and we are saying the distribution won't change as long as the interval is the width is the same do you agree okay sir yeah mm -hmm. like here distribution is there and there the system response we are talking about yeah so they are completely okay. conceptually different okay 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 so uh, here um, see uh, x of t2 minus t1 minus x of 0 you can think of it as the number of arrivals in an interval of uh, t2 to minus t2 minus t1 width so the distribution well the arrivals are in uh, uh, random right so therefore the distribution will be the same irrespective of where you take that uh, where you look at that interval okay whether you, uh, you look at a 30 minute window uh, today evening today morning day after tomorrow it doesn't matter the distribution remain the same it will be poisson with rate lambda times 30 minutes okay is that fine okay so um the other uh, thing that we also looked at in the context of poisson was independent increments what do you mean by that i'll just uh, i want formally write here i'll probably write the uh, description so maybe i'll write pictures right if you look at for example t1 t2 etc and look at for example k epochs or k time instances uh, where t1 is strictly less than t2 and so on now you look at for example the difference right so if you look at the number of arrivals in the time interval t1 to t2 which is x of t2 minus x of t1 that's the number that's the counting and you look at x of t3 minus t2 sorry uh, x of t3 minus x of t2 and so on right so they uh, the last one will be x of tk minus x of tk minus 1 right so these are random variables do you agree if you fix t1 through tk these are random variables if these random variables are independent okay so or statistically independent so what does that mean that means that we say that the process implies process x of t it has independent increment independent is that fine everyone is that okay hmm? yes sir okay so sh shall we move on um, so these are the two notions we need uh, in order to define what a um, wiener or a brownian motion okay is that fine so of course uh, i can consider the corresponding uh, let's say gaussian process with these properties but let's let's uh, let's define uh, wiener process i won't go uh, um, deeper than this but just you know think of it as some sort of a jargon um, um, you have heard of these quantities okay um, of course um, you can uh, treat this rigorously by proving that there exists such a thing brownian motion or a wiener process and how do you construct it and all that but let's not uh, worry about that okay so a wiener process or a brownian motion okay is a it's a zero mean gaussian process zero mean gaussian process i'll use gp for uh, gaussian process okay you know what a gaussian process is right is that fine everyone knows what a gaussian process is ha huh? hello can somebody tell me nitish can you tell me what is a gaussian process nitish you guys can hear me or uh, hello ah. 
so can you tell me what is the gaussian process okay ayush can you tell me what is the gaussian process yes sir hmm. sir uh, like if like t1 t2 and uh, up to up to some tk we are, there are the epochs and we hmm. take x of t1 and and up to tk x of tk mm -hmm. then these are then these should be jointly gaussian okay so this should be jointly gaussian regardless of what t1 through tk is and regardless of what k you pick k could be 2 or k could be 100000 if you take 100000 it will be a 100000 dimensional random vector which is distributed as gaussian right okay yeah. good so this is a gaussian uh, process uh, but it should have zero mean that is expected value of x of t is zero for all t greater than or equal to zero and has which has stationary and independent increments and independent okay and also it satisfies um x of 0 equal to 0 well i should say almost surely because uh, x of 0 is a random variable and has continuous sample path continuous sample function with probability 1 okay so the last part is a bit technical so essentially what it's saying is you take a process which starts at x of 0 equal to 0 and then evolves in a gaussian fashion with zero mean uh, and it has stationary and in independent increment what do you mean by independent increment you take any um any two uh, time instances uh, look at the difference that is independent of uh, you look at the um, the process at across two other time instances which are further away from the first two right they are independent right and what do you mean by uh, stationary so it only depends on the difference not on the uh, time right so what do you mean by that so for example x of t1 minus x of t2 right so this uh, is definitely gaussian do you agree with whatever zero mean and some variance so this is same as x of t2 minus t1 minus x of 0 but x of 0 is zero anyway so this is also well by definition it's gaussian with certain variance now it essentially says that these two distributions are same right that means the variance that you put here right so let's call it as t2 minus t1 squared t2 minus t1 squared will be the same right that's what stationarity is all about independent increments essentially says that if you take uh, x of t1 and t2 and then x of t3 minus x of t4 they have independent random variables again both are gaussians but independent right um the last part which is has continuous sample function with probability 1 that means if you have this um, so suppose you uh, generate this right so this looks something like this right this is sample path 1 right you can generate this using matlab or whatever right it starts at 0 you can generate one more right so this will be like this and so on you can generate um, many millions of them right so this is sir, one, yes sir what is the sample path sir actually or sample function sir? Uh, this is a function so x of t basically oh x of okay, So x of t, I can think of. Sir, it as a, hello. Yes. Yes. So one more thing, like here we are using the word increment. So increment mm -hmm. here is the increment in time. Yes. So increment is basically, um, um, you know, for example, you look at x of zero and my x of t minus x of zero, right? That is the difference, and I can just push it to the right by the same amount, right? So any amount, for example. right they will also have the same distribution increment means um, um if you fix the difference and increment the process the difference will have the same distribution so in that sense it's incremental okay? okay if so it's confusing don't worry about the jargon it's a name right you know what it means but it's just a name hmm? 
yes sir. is that fine uh, so uh, increment is basically uh, you take from 0 to t uh, the number of arrivals or if you look at x of t minus x of 0 right that's the increment how much more uh, at x of t compared to x of 0 that is the increment right independent increment meaning you shift the whole interval to any place uh, the statistics won't change increment in this sense so the number of particle arriving at 0 till 0 minus the number of particle arriving till t the difference is basically the increment right the, how much more particles arrived in an interval of 0 to t that's the increment yes, sir yes. sir does uh, stationary increment and in, uh, independent uh, distinct uh, implies that uh, what do you mean by stationary transition distribution right same no sir does right? that imply that the uh, process is stationary which implies that the process is stationary this to stationary uh, uh, and independent uh, obviously right? so by definition if you say stationary it's stationary see uh, stationary increments means for example you take 0 to t okay you take for example some some place here okay so this is t1 this is uh, uh, t minus uh, sorry plus t1 okay right so the both the widths are same right t so if you look at the distribution of the first one this will have the same distribution as the second one okay it doesn't matter um which which one you pick so the distributions will be the same but doesn't mean that they are independent right so it's independent only when they, these two don't overlap that's what uh the independent increments increment property says is that fine okay everything fine so uh, just give me stationary uh, increment has nothing to do with white sand stationary and this type of um well uh, what do you mean by white sand stationary so mean is constant and covariance is the function of time difference constant of uh, yes so now you only answer Uh, the distribution yes, same, so uh, I mean should be same. Hmm. See, if you look at this, it essentially says just one second. Uh, which of all? Connect this. Huh. Huh. Okay. Huh. So, uh, what is this saying? So, this is saying um, the. Uh, if you look at, for example, the zero uh, to t versus shifted, right? The distribution is the same. Do you agree? Ah mm, uh, yes, sir. Right. So now it. Uh, so what is stationarity mean? Stationarity means you take, for example, three intervals. Right. You look at x of t one, x of t two, x of t three. Right. But you shift it by tau. For example, x of t one plus tau, x of t two plus tau, x of t three plus tau. Now all these this will have some joint distribution. This will have some joint distribution. So now stationarity demands that the joint distributions should match, irrespective of where you take t1 to t2 and t3, and irrespective of what tau is. And in fact, it's not just three points; it's any other any points, right? Ah mm -hmm. yes. Sir. Okay. So uh, if you take, a, for example, a stationary increment, it doesn't mean that it should be a stationary process, right? Ah uh, yes. Just an increment. The process need not be stationary. Ah mm, uh, yes sir, okay sir. Right? Do you agree? Ah uh, yes sir. Ah huh? okay. Okay. So now uh, you have these sample paths, and uh, I can think of these sample paths or these functions x of t as uh, as some function, right? Not as a random process. So now, if you look at uh, this as a function, and you pick some point, right? Let's say t naught. I can talk about the continuity of the function at t naught. Do you agree, everyone? Hmm? Yes. Is that fine? Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. think of some stock market. If you model it as a Brownian motion, uh, then you have different days stock value ev evolution. So you'll have so many uh, different uh, functions right you can think of it as a function so if you fix t not i can talk about continuity of t not right so now um, you know at t not i cannot say whether the function is x of t is continuous or not right do you agree 
is that fine i cannot say that right can you say that it's continuous sir actually this xt from where it is coming sir it is from the the process sir yes so it's process. Xt. that's what i'm saying yeah process x of t sumit so you have to simulate things you have to learn program and then simulate sample uh, these random variables from a certain distribution and see what it actually means okay um so x of t is a random process okay what do you mean by that if you take a t not x of t not is a random variable that's by definition right? yes yeah right that means yes. each time you conduct an experiment you will get different values at t not that's what it means yes. right and i can think of each realization as a function right this yes, of yeah. realization as a function so there are so many functions and i want to talk about continuity so if i take t not and say that this particular realization is continuous at t not doesn't make sense right so maybe at that particular uh, you, you were you turned out to be lucky and it became continuous at that point right so if at all you want to talk about continuity you can talk about continuity with certain probability right the chances of it being continuous uh yes Do you agree uh sir there is uh, i mean it cannot be continuous like uh, at a moment it have value like one the next uh, very instant it can have like infinity value or some very large value it cannot have with probability one that's what it says so for example if i say x of t such that x of t is continuous at t okay do you do you agree that this is an event x of t such that x of t is well let me not even say x of t such that so x of t is continuous at t so do you think this is an event or not this is an event right hmm oh, yes sir what is an event can somebody tell me what is an event i think uh, like some sample values uh, hmm uh, sigma algebra uh, there will be some small omegas for that uh, so that xt this function will be continuous okay so let, let's forget about random process so pravin can you tell me what is uh, or, or nitish can you tell me what is a um, what is an event nitish hello yes sir ah, what is an event what question again shall repeat so if you have so what is an event suppose you have a random experiment okay so um, and you get a sample space so the number of out, the possible outcomes omega now what is an event okay so jayant so you can we define it as collection uh, i think we not just uh, shut down okay so you should say i don't know at least you say that ha huh? jayant sir can we define it as a collection of outcomes or to which a probability can be assigned okay what is that called in sir uh, what is that called event uh, okay there is another name right okay so fine uh, ayush yes sir yeah can you can you answer the definition of event hmm so uh, so the collection of the like if we have uh, capital omega as a sample space then the subsets of which of that is called event can be termed as event um can you be more precise can any subset of uh, omega be can be an event yes, sir like it should belong to the sigma algebra also okay right so if you take any set in the sigma algebra that's an event because that set is a subset of omega and it satisfies certain properties right so it's an event right is that fine okay so now uh, it turns out that for example if you say so essentially i can make a statement as follows right i can say um how do i say that uh, uh set of all outcomes 
okay for which x of t is discontinuous okay right so this is an event right I, x of t is discontinuous some at some point right points or point right this is an event so i can associate probability to it so what it's essentially saying is this probability is zero that means if you do this experiment zillion times in most of the outcomes the function will be continuous right the fraction of the times the function will be discontinuous will go down to zero if you increase the number of experiments okay that's what it's saying is that clear uh, yes sir uh, this okay. is for it's which it's kind of weird but um, you know um, this is a technicality technical condition that you need yes uh, sir this is for which xt i mean this for brownian motion or like in general yes 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 so that's the definition right has continuous sample function which ah, okay. ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. um okay. for sumit it's essentially almost everywhere continuous okay is that fine sumit yes sir this function x of t is so this process x of t is almost everywhere continuous sir okay yes sir sir in this definition sir we have already fixed that uh, this xt is a stationary process gaussian process with zero mean no sir yes so it is only one xt so we get only one are we talking about this function only that xt because you have taken two functions and you are saying that uh, i think you should um tomorrow you should submit uh, to me a program that will result in samples generated from gaussian from uh, mm -hmm. exponential and from bernoulli okay then i will answer this mm -hmm. question because uh, you cannot just i mean it's good to uh, do this in fact all of you should do this i hope you have done this before Hmm? Okay. I asked you to do that, right? So Hello, sir. Yes. Yes. So, yes. in general, Gaussian process need not be continuous. In general, Gaussian process need not be continuous. In general, yes. Hmm? Okay. I think we can construct a Gaussian general Gaussian process with jumps. I think so, but. um i should not uh, you know claim that immediately but i think we can so see um, why do you need this uh, has continuous sample function with probability 1 there is a deeper question can we construct such a process right independent uh, increment stationary gaussian process with zero mean can you construct such a process does it make sense this is a deep mathematical question right and what you do is you try to construct such a process so that it's within the framework of probability theory right when you do so naturally you will need some uh, you know requirements one of the requirement is has continuous sample function okay so that's where the this particular thing comes up but um, otherwise you can just uh, you know rub this under the carpet and uh, forget about it okay all that you need is gaussian process zero mean stationary and independent increments okay sumit uh, are you there sumit yes sir yeah ah. so uh, to answer your question when i say x of t to x of t is what i meant was the realization of x of t right yes yeah, sir that i got sir but sir ah. you are taking sir two two x of t is no sir because for this one process okay, we so get only one I, function I, I, x you know sir uh, okay so uh, let me write small x of t okay these are reali realization you know what realizations are right Yes, sir. The value attained by the function at that point is that realization, no, sir. Uh, it's not the value here; it's the function itself. See, yes, sir. The when you toss a coin, okay, so Bernoulli random variable, right? Yes. X sir. is a Bernoulli random. It's a function, again, right? Mm hmm. So I can toss the coin ten times. I get ten realizations. For example, I'll get one zero one one zero one zero and so on, right? That's yes, a realization. Sir. Ten realizations. you okay. cannot say you have written 10 random variables no it's the it's 10 realizations of the same random variable x okay yes, similarly sir. here you have for each t x of t is a random variable right yes sir for each t x of t is a random variable so i can sample from some distribution right well in this case you have to look at the joint distribution because it's a process right so 
Yeah. Think of uh, you know there is a box mm. whose output is a function, right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Right. Each time you switch on the box, you'll get a function. That's a realization. Okay. You switch on again, mm. you'll get another realization. You switch on, switch on again, another realization. All of them okay. will be different because it's random. Oh, it right? means sir that uh, the function here x t you are reading, writing, sir. It is mm. just for a, for a particular point t. It is a random variable, and we are just real. It is a realization correct, of correct, that x t only. No, sir. Correct. Correct. But you have to be oh. careful. The the realization of x of t depends on. x of t dash i mean neighbor neighboring t as well right it can be dependent yes, and all yeah. that so yes. yeah jointly you will realize that it's not just one x of t random variable it's the entire sample path sample path oh, is okay. basically the entire function okay okay so yeah got it yes sir yeah huh? so mm. just to give you more clarity on this uh, i'll just uh, give an example of a gaussian process so suppose i have this right gaussian process which is i'll take a very specific gaussian process okay xk uh, sink of 2 bt minus n okay okay in this case right this is a gaussian process do you agree yes sir okay so strictly speaking what is it that I, i'll make it even more uh, simple for you okay i'll go till n right yes so this is gaussian zero mean uh, sigma squared variance okay iid Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to generate n independent Gaussian random variables and construct this function. Do you agree? Okay, how, sir. How, how, how do you get a sample uh, path of this or a um, realization of this? You just generate n independent and identically distributed Gaussian random variables. Construct this function. Okay, so now omega for me is what? Or n, right? F is yes, what? Sir. The Borel n, right? The n-dimensional Borel. What is the probability measure? It's the product, product. right? Into n pi. What is this individual pi? Gaussian, right? Well, I am talking about the density, but this is the. This is uh, for the entire process, right? You are writing this omega and sigma. No, 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 no. These are all for random variables x one through x n, right? Do you agree? Now, once I conduct the experiment, what do I get? I get omega in omega. Do you agree? Hmm. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. The moment I get omega, so the omega is what? Omega one, omega two, and so on. Omega n. Right. This is the realization. The moment I go get the realization, what can I do? I can do the following. Right. So k equal to zero to n. Well, uh, this should start from zero, one, and so on. Omega k sink of two b t minus k. Right. This is what I can do. This is yes, one realization of this process. Okay. okay so yeah. again i can sample omega from omega i'll get let's say omega not dash omega one dash and so on omega one dash this will give me another process k equal to zero to n omega k dash sing blah 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 this... so actually i can write this process as what x of omega t okay the moment you sample from omega i'll get a so basically a function i can think of it like that do you agree yes sir okay so uh, i think for all concrete for concreteness you the moment i say random process think of this x of omega t okay rather than just x yes so it's like mapping uh, for each omega sample function yes you can think of it like that yeah so for each omega in omega you will have a function so the moment you give me omega the function is fixed it's deterministic mapping it's a usual function okay fine what is random here the realization of omega or the experiments involving omega is random is that fine um yes sir sumit, huh? yes sir sumit i think uh, i think not just sumit i think all of you should uh, write at least one i have been telling you so okay um i think this is the time so i want all of you to uh, uh, verify central limit theorem law of large numbers okay either weak or strong whatever you pick 
and uh, realization of one gaussian process i want these three programs to be submitted by next monday okay it will carry so that will be part of your next assignment part of your next assignment 50% of the weightage for the next assignment will be for this 50% will be for the exercise problem whatever the homework problems sir hmm. yes uh, then it means so for the gaussian processor that day you said no sir four functions we can take hmm. that same hmm. thing sir. what four function uh, generating a gaussian process on the day you said to write a program sir take for ah. orthonormal summation x k phi of like yes so you can take uh, four or five forty or five hundred how does it matter once you write yeah. the program keep no. that parameter uh, flexible you keep fifty hundred whatever no sir hmm? what means we did that sir uh, hmm. okay fine if you have done it then great so what you do is uh, submit it that's all hmm No, sir. Yeah, on that day, you said that next day we can discuss on that. I'll uh, I'll show some uh, things uh, in our right. math class. Okay. So um, okay. So maybe um, just skip that. Okay. So fine. I will do that in the next class. Um, the remaining the so law of large numbers, central term, limit term. You have to verify and show it to me. Is that okay, yes. Pravin? Can you do that? Yes, sir. Okay. So Rishab. Ah, uh, so yes, sir, sir. This yeah. is good, sir. Yeah. I also don't know exactly. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do that. Sumit, yes, sir. I will try. Sir, yeah. Need any help in that? So you can ask Savan if you need any help. Okay. Okay, sir. Sure, sure. See, the idea is not to test you. The idea is to make you understand. Okay. So okay. this is very important, right? So if you go somewhere and say that oh, I have taken random process, all that, and then you don't even know what what a realization means and what. Uh, Law of large numbers means and what central limit theorem. What is the notion of convergence? Then they say, oh, you don't know random process, right? So I think it's uh, always a good idea to at least do one set of programming. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Which which uh, languages are you guys free uh, comfortable with? Nitish. C. Sir. You are comfortable with C. Okay. Jayant. So shouldn't we do it MATLAB? For this MATLAB, we can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use yeah. MATLAB. MATLAB is like two lines of code. Um, Nitish, if you want to do it in C, or are you comfortable with Python? Nitish. Yes, sir. Are you comfortable with Python? Okay, sir. No, okay is not the answer, right? Are I am asking you a question. Are you comfortable with Python or not? So it should be yes or no, right? Okay is not. Huh? Yes, sir. Are you comfortable? Sure. Yes, sir. No, don't uh, just just for the sake of saying you don't say. So if you are not comfortable, uh, you comfortable in C, sir. But I will try it in Python. Python. Okay. So you can take help from Savan and uh, okay. do it, even if you are not comfortable. Okay. Sumit, uh, I would suggest that you start with Python. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So if you are not, it's not a big code or anything. You can uh, take help from Savan on this. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. I think Praveen, Rishab, uh, Ayush, and uh, Jayant. You use MATLAB. It's straightforward. Okay. Fine. Hmm. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on. So this is clear, right? So this is all about uh, the uh, Brownian motion uh, and Wiener process. I don't want to go beyond this. And even if you look at the book, uh, there's not much. Okay, so uh, he talks about a little bit about the continuity and uh, um, uh, the construction a little bit. I mean, how what is the what is a typical uh, um, Brownian motion or a Wiener process looks like? But I won't even go there. Okay, so I'll just stop here. Uh, those who are interested, they can uh, not read this book, but any book on um, just maybe Google for uh, construction of Brownian motion or Wiener process. You know, there are a lot of uh, entries okay uh, shall we move on yes sir yes sir, yes. sir noise is continuous gaussian process right um continuous noise? in time but not in state i think huh so, uh, so this continuous term is in for time only not in the values uh, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. So as a as if you look at it, x of omega t as a for a fixed omega, if you look at it as a function of t, right? It's a function. Now you can say whether it's a see. It's like this, right? So if you fix this omega, right? X of omega comma t is a is a function. Do you agree? Now I can ask this question of whether this is continuous or not. The answer could be yes, no, right? Do you agree? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. So now again, I do the experiment. I'll get a different omega, right? Omega dash. So the moment you fix this omega dash, this is another function. Now I can ask the question whether it's continuous or not. Yes, no. Keep on doing that, right? So I'll have so many yes, no answers, right? So if most of them are yes, right? In other words, if you look at the ratio of number of yes divided by the total number, if that converges to one, we say that with probability one, this is continuous, right? Do you agree? That's what I mean. Hmm? Is that okay or no? Hello, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, these uh, realizations are independent of each other, right? Not necessarily. Uh, well, in this case, uh, yes. It's an independent realization. Yes. Right. It's an independent realization. Is that fine? Okay. So I think we'll move on. So the next topic is um, circularly symmetric. Symmetric complex uh, random vectors. Okay. Let's uh, discuss what this is. First of all, um, we have been looking at random variables, right? Uh, what is a random variable? Can somebody tell me? Nitish, Nitish. Yes. What, sir. what is a random variable? Any event in real time. Huh? Any event in real time. What do you mean by that? Hmm? Any event in real time? Huh? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. What What do you mean by that? No, you can explain. Don't get afraid of anything, man. So just don't don't sit. I whatever. Uh, start asking questions. Interact. Then we'll know. We'll understand, right? For example, Rishab asks a lot of questions. Sometimes Praveen asks, Sumit asks, right? He interrupts and asks a lot of questions, right? Uh, Ayush also asks. So you should don't don't hesitate. Don't get scared or anything. So okay, now tell me what is a random variable? Hmm? Jayant, can you tell me? Means it's a ma map, sir, from uh, from Somewhere sample space there. to real number line. Okay. Do you need any other conditions? Me means that exact definition, sir, in that you mentioned uh, x hmm. of omega should be less than uh, some value. Yeah. We'll take infinite. We can take it as infinity, no, sir. Okay, Ayush, can you refine that? Um, it's not at Means all. Clear. All those outcomes should belongs to sigma algebra. Is that what you are expecting? Yes, so it should be very clear. Yeah, okay. That's not what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, so I was expecting the answer, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It is all those outcomes which got mapped to a number less than or equal to A should belong to F for every A in R, right? That is the definition of a random variable, right? You should be very clear on that. Hmm? Okay, omega to R. Says that set of all omega in omega says that x of omega less than or equal to let's say x belongs to f for every x in R. We should never forget this. You should know what this means. Okay. So what is a complex random variable? Hmm? So for example, uh, maybe, why? Uh, why? Well, maybe x plus some iota y, y, x and y are two random variables. Yeah, exactly, right? 
these are random variables right then we say that z z is a complex random variable okay now we have a complex uh, random variable so i can talk about um what do you mean by circularly symmetric complex gaussian right so what do you mean by circularly symmetric complex gaussian well, well let's get into uh, directly get into a uh, gaussian complex this discussion will be slightly informal okay what is a gaussian complex random variable again x plus i y x and y are jointly gaussian okay it can be independent it need not be independent it doesn't matter right so comp it's a uh, general uh, complex it's a complex gaussian random variable is that okay everyone sumit are you okay with this definition yes sir pravin resha bayesh and yes sir yes okay no problem yes. so this is a complex gaussian random variable right now i can um, of course the, the moment i say complex gaussian random variable so i can talk about a notion called circularly symmetric so let me talk about that so what do you mean by a complex gaussian random variable so essentially i can have i can represent this as real and imaginary right so that means i'll have a radius r and an angle theta right so r is also random theta is also random then the point that i get is a gaussian random variable Ga gaussian complex random variable so what is r here right what is theta tan inverse of y by x right so this is how you get r and theta when you have xy being jointly gaussian the moment you got xy you know what r and theta are right okay now um, what do you mean by circularly symmetric okay so let's look at circularly symmetric trick complex gaussian so i won't again do it very formally but uh, in, let's look at some intuition right so what do you mean by circular symmetry so the moment you have a complex gaussian uh, random variable uh, that's a point in the complex plane right so if i rotate it for example if i rotate it by an angle of theta right i get for example a vector like this right do you agree so if this is z what should be this if i want to rotate it by an angle of theta e to the power i to theta multiplied uh, so this will be e power i theta right if i multiply by e power i theta it uh, it's a mo it amounts to rotation by an angle of uh, theta is that fine hmm yes sir. everyone okay so this is also a random variable this is also a random variable what can you say about uh, these two so this x plus y is joint x plus i y is jointly uh, so this is a complex gaussian random variable right so what am i doing i'm multiplying it by cos theta plus i sin theta right so what do you get x cos theta right minus y uh, sin theta right plus i times what do you get x sin theta plus y cos theta do you agree yes ah. now what can you say about uh, this quantity x cos theta minus y sin theta see theta is a fixed number right cos theta is a number sin theta is a number so what can you say about this if x and y are jointly gaussian hmm? so it's a gaussian sir because they linear gaussian, combination right do you agree yes, so this is also jointly gaussian right so i have something that is there are two random variables let's say x dash y dash both are jointly gaussian right why you take a linear combination of x dash and y dash you get a linear combination of x and y therefore it is jointly gaussian right therefore <laughs> it implies z e power i theta is also jointly gaussian do you agree 
fine right yes sir Ah. Jointly Gaussian or simple Gaussian? Ah. It's jointly Gaussian. Well, uh, oh, oh uh, it's also uh, complex Gaussian. Complex sorry. Gaussian, yeah, yeah. Ah. Thanks. Good. It's also complex Gaussian, right? Do you agree? Now, what do you mean by circular symmetry? So, if you have z, of course, I know that it uh, complex Gaussian. Z power i theta is also complex Gaussian. If both the distributions turned out to be the same. right same distribution then we say that this is circularly symmetric complex gaussian okay and this should happen for all theta okay if you take any theta in r so this should be true then we say that z is a circularly symmetric complex gaussian that means you rotate by any degree doesn't matter the resulting random variable uh, the resulting complex random variable will be same as the distribution will be same as z then we say that it is complex it is circularly symmetric is that fine hmm yes sir. okay everyone hello yes sir uh, take one uh, small question like sir if when do when we say that the two random variables are of same uh, distribution like uh, sir when the parameters are same or like the like just the distribution is same distribution is same like sir if there are two like for example two gaussian uh, uh, distribution with uh, two different mean and variance one is mu1 and sigma sigma1 square and one is mu2 and sigma2 square Okay. So sir, uh, so the random variable of both will be same distribution. We will say or different distribution. There will be different distribution. So what I'm saying is, see, z will be complex Gaussian. So what do you mean by z? It's x plus i y, right? So i and y are jointly Gaussian. That's how we started out with. Do you agree? Right? Yes, sir. Ah. Huh. So now, if I take z e power i theta, right, it will have x dash plus i y dash, right? You agree? When do you say yeah. that these two have the same distribution? Whenever x dash y dash is distribution, joint distribution is same as x y joint distribution. Do you agree? So by same distribution, we are saying the parameters will be also same. Yes. So the distribution should be match exactly match. So, if you are looking at joint de Gaussian, for example, the mean vector and the covariance should match both of them. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, is that fine? Um, yes, sir. Now we can ask the reverse question, right? Under what uh -huh. condition this happens? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, sir, so there are maybe two distributions, like they are mean and variance, uh, like uh, can be same, but they are not pointwise same uh, in the PDF. uh can that happen okay, can you repeat that question what is that sir i, sir, I mean uh, uh maybe we generate two distributions uh, uh which uh, maybe both are gaussian distribution and their mean are same mm. and variance also same uh, that means mm. they are also pointwise same in the pdf oh, like exactly, right you will get e 1 by root 2 pi sigma e power minus x minus mu whole square by 2 ah, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter they exactly match Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that fine? Now, what is the obvious question now? So uh, the question would be, if this, if the distributions were to match, so what is happening here? So if you take z and multiply by e power i theta, what is happening to z e power i theta? So the radius is same, right? R. That means the distribution of x squared plus y squared is not changing anywhere, right? Regardless of what. whether it's circularly symmetric not circularly symmetric doesn't matter this is same right but what is changing the angle right so what will be the new angle new angle will be x sin theta min plus y cos theta divided by uh, x cos theta minus y sin theta right is that correct nice right? so this is your new theta Right, theta dash. What was theta? Tan inverse of y by x. Do you agree? So now all that you have to show essentially is these two distributions are same, right? 
Do you agree? The angle should also match. Not just the anyway distance is the same, so the angle distribution is also same, and it's independent of x and y. Okay. So now uh, I'll answer, and then we will look at the details in the next class. So suppose, okay, uh, let's look at let's assume this fact now and move on. So what will be the variance? I mean, for example, if you look, if z is your x plus i y, okay, and let's assume that uh, x and y are independent. So Gaussian zero mean variance sigma squared. Okay, then what can you say about expected value of z squared? It's expected value of x plus y whole squared. X plus y whole squared is x squared minus y squared plus two i times x y. So this is expected value of x squared is sigma squared minus sigma squared two times expected value of x y. X and y are independent, so this cancels. We have two i. Times expected value of x times expected value of y, but both are zero. So you get zero, right? So essentially, expected value of z squared is zero if x and y are independent. Zero mean, okay? But expected value of z z star, the conjugate, which is expected value of mod z squared, which is expected value of x squared plus y squared. What is the answer? Huh? Two sigma squared. Two sigma squared, right? Yeah. Okay. So keep this in mind. Okay. So if you take a complex Gaussian zero mean variance sigma squared, then if you take expected value of z squared, you'll get zero. Expected value of mod z squared, you'll get two times the variance. Okay. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So we will continue with this in the next class. So whenever z is circularly symmetric complex Gaussian, people use this notation. Okay, zero mean sigma squared variance. Okay. So you should be very careful. So when what does that mean? That means x plus i y, x y r i i d Gaussian zero mean sigma squared by two variance. Okay, because when you add the two, you get two times, right? Two times sigma squared by two is sigma squared. That's what we will write here. So this is the notation. Keep in mind. Hmm? Whenever you say circularly symmetric complex Gaussian, zero means sigma squared variance. That means x and y will have variance of sigma squared by two. Okay. If I say complex Gaussian circularly symmetric zero mean unit variance, then each one of them will have half variance. Okay. Is that fine? Everyone, uh, uh, sir, here yes, sir. the uh, z the random variable like it's complex random, random variable. Complex random variable, yes. So that means the mapping is from sigma algebra to complex number. Ah, uh. uh, you can think of it as uh, a mapping from some omega, not sigma algebra, omega to a complex random complex field. Yes. Uh, yes. So that means the mean can be a, a complex number. Mean. Yes, the mean can be a complex number. Yes, but variance can never be a complex number. It, yeah, uh, yes. So the way you define variance here is quite different. Okay, it's not expected value of x minus expected value of x whole squared. That might give you zero also. <laughs> so you should be very careful when you define the variance here. Okay, we will see that in the next class. Hmm? Okay. Because see, uh, I think you have seen this here itself, right? If you just take expected value of expected value of z is zero, right? Because expected value of x is zero and y is zero. So expected value of z squared is also zero here, right? So you should be very careful when you deal with the these things. So generally, the way you do this is you say expected value of x minus x of mod squared. That will be your variance. Hmm? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Any any other questions? Sir, so it is the same like as a complex measurable function, no sir? Yes, exactly same. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly same. Okay, same. sir. Mm -hmm. No difference. Okay. Praveen, any questions? Nitish, Jayant, Ayush. No sir. 
okay so if there are no questions we'll stop uh, sumit just uh, stay back uh, others can leave if you want hmm? if you have no questions hmm?